Who's going to tell us about this? Okay. Uh, yeah, I came. Uh, this program started more in the summer, so I came in in the summer helping out uh, Miss Childress, which is one of our first aviations where our uh, teacher came in. We had an opportunity to fly a plane in Cuyahoga County. Uh, that was my first time even on the plane at that time, so that was interesting as well. But it was a very fun experience. Your aviation program to start, but if you're even think, if you're even considering it as one of your options to fly become a pilot, you can start with your pilot love to have your hours and it's a great opportunity. We have selected the drones that we use in the program as well. So we're not only teaching our students how to fly, we're teaching students how to uh, fly our drones. We have uh, some of the smallest drones right here. We have the uh, uh, first person flight drones. Our students today are going to be taking a flight complete with the Kyle Harvey County Airport or obviously Kent State. So, oh, wow. Okay. They are prepared to do that. about expanding opportunities for our students, particularly in the areas where they're underrepresented, and they're just taking off. And so, so how, so how, how do you decide on these, do you get money for these two For these two children. Yeah. Just um, in the field, just knowing what um, jobs are prominent now, and so the manufacturing field, and just knowing that in aviation, particularly minorities are underrepresented. And our students, I believe, can only be what they see. And most students, if they've ever flown, they've seen a pilot. 
and I just want to expose them to more opportunities. There are so many careers in aviation, and we have an airport right next door, so why not partner with them and expose them to all of the careers around aviation? Manufacturing piece has been great. Our students have interned at Swage Lodge, Sherwin Williams, Highland, Rockwell, and this is a skills box. And um, our teacher, Mr. Josh Patty, he's certified CPT, so our students actually gain certification. And these were the two um, careers that we chose. Now we're looking to expand that even further uh, with the Innovations Grant to see if we can even make this part of the Hillcrest Area Career Consortium. We're part of Excel Tech. So while our students are taking advantage of this, there's just so much more from Northeast Ohio that we would like to offer. And so that's the next part of the vision. All of this is in connection with the aviation vision and just trying to expand our students to greater opportunities. So we thank you. Well, I just think it's so very important for young people, as you say, to be exposed to different careers. Because if they can't see it, they can't, it. They can't dream it. I mean, they, you know, they just they don't even understand it or know what it's out there. But knowing what's out there, of course, we've taken that to the next stage, which is not only know what's out there, but we're starting to have some participation. That's right. And so we're thankful for the partnerships, because without the partnerships of the airport, uh, partnerships with our own Richmond Heights resident, Mr. Mayor, who knew right here in Richmond Heights, a pilot, certified, and he's here as an independent consultant, teaching our students what he's lived his career doing. So we are grateful for that. But it all started with our opportunity grant in the state and the ODE, and like I said, we're looking to even expand even further. For the skills boss, what is all of this, and what is CPT certification? Yeah, tell, tell us what's going on here. This is to be a certified production technician. Um, so students will take a uh, course that's online and hands-on. There's over 50 to 60 different hands-on uh, things we'll have to do with the skills boss. This is an additional certification they'll get after their CPT course, which is about 140 hours of classroom time. Um, once they have that 12-hour certification, they pass those four separate tests, then they'll get the hands-on work continuing, uh, which will give an additional 12-hour certification through MSSC. So, um, and so what's that mean? What's that so the Manufacturing Skills Standards Council is a nationally and internationally accredited uh, advisory board that was started in 1998, I believe and they wanted to get all these manufacturing uh, uh, businesses together and come up with a set of standards so we can have students that come out of school uh, ready to work. And so this is gonna help alleviate those issues where students are gonna already have those skills and it's gonna save money in the long end. So they'll be able to walk out of high school with, and get a high paying job right away. So they've got, they will come out with a certificate? Yeah, so they're gonna get a CPT uh, 4.0 certificate that'll help them also graduate. And then they're also going to get an additional hands-on cert certificate that'll, you know, that'll bring them. And, and, they can... and, and so, what's your what's your background in this area? Yeah. So my background uh, is social studies for 18 years, and then I'm an employment skills teacher. But I always like to tinker around with machines, okay. and backpack blowers, and I ran a little kind of landscaping company. And they, you know, if I need something fixed, I I try to fix it myself. And so when they ask somebody to step up to the plate, I, I thought it sounded interesting and I always want to keep learning. And I kind of, so it's a challenge and I was like, I'll take it. So I've learned so much. So, so tell me how uh, students get interested in this at all. How will they get interested in manufacturing? My uh, perception is that with many students, they don't have an idea. No matter where they live in Ohio, they don't have really much an idea about what manufacturing actually is. Sure. How, how, do, how do you get them interested or how do they become interested? Yeah, it's going to be exposure. Uh, getting the students ex in, involved in playing with the, the machine, bringing them to Lincoln Electric, bringing them to uh, other factories around here and just seeing what goes on in these operations and then show them how much money they can make in these places. So that's always, you know, money is, money is a big motivator. And so once the students understand that they can make a lot of money right out of high school, if they don't want to take on that college debt like their teacher still has, then they can kind of go right into, and, and, and probably most of us, they can go right into a, a, a high paying manufacturing job with skills already. That's going to save these companies a lot of money. And, and how long 
for both these programs, how long have you all had these programs actually in, in place? How long has that been? It's been two and a half years. Well, you know, virtual last year with COVID, right. but yeah, two and a half years, and so we're finally back on the ground and um, actually in the air, literally. So I, I have to give this caveat. Before the students took to the air last summer, they said, we're not doing it until you do it, Dr. Bullock. So myself, the superintendent, and the high school principal, wow. we had to fly first. And then when they saw that we did it, they followed in the footsteps. And Lord knows it was scary, but it was beautiful. It was awesome. So they are a lot. They can get uh, FAA certification in in flight as well as drones. So they too can leave school with certifications. Well, this is an exciting program, both the manufacturing program as well as the aviation uh, program. And I think it really gets back, what we have to do uh, is to make sure that young people, whether they live suburb, city, uh, or rural area uh, across the state of Ohio, have the opportunity to see different things, to experience different things. Uh, and that's how they're going to you know, eventually get, get a dream, eventually get a passion for something that they really care a lot about, something that they want to do. Um, and that's what you hope for your own children. That's what I now hope for my grandchildren, is they find something that they really, really like to do, and for some reason to get up in the morning and say, look, this is a great job, I can, I can make a good living, I can raise a family, and I'm also doing something I like. So, you know, these students, for example, see planes go by all the time, they're close to the airplane. Um, and as we've heard, uh, some of them had a dream early on that they would like to fly, but others maybe never thought about that until this program was, was introduced. Uh, so it, it's exciting. The same way with manufacturing. You know, they're in the heart of a lot of manufacturing where, where the school is. Uh, but do they really know what goes on in manufacturing? And, and I think the experience is most kids don't. Um, until they actually see it, until they actually have some experience with it. So this is uh, it's exciting. We wanted to come here today because these are two programs that are innovative programs. Uh, these are programs that you know really can excite young people. And it's not just excitement, but then it's giving them the tools that they need to, to start in the, in the program. I mean, coming out, for example, with the manufacturing program with a certificate, that can get their foot in the door of manufacturing is very, uh, very important, very significant. So it's that coming together, frankly, of the professions coming together, business uh, with education. That's what we're seeing here. Okay, tell me who we're looking at here. <laughs> uh, we're talking about facts and inferences, and we pull up a picture. We talked about time of day, and we said, well, we're guessing it's the afternoon because we see a shadow. So I walked around with my camera, and I shined a light on their hands, and they were able to see how the shadow mimics what the sun might be in the afternoon. Nice to see you all. <laughs>